Baba Ganoush. Not only is it awesome to say, it's absolutely delicious. It's incredibly easy to make. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, and I promise you, you're gonna love this recipe. So I made hummus not too long ago, and that recipe absolutely blew up. So I had quite a few folks ask, could you now do baba ganoush? So I figured, let's, let's baba ganoush. I don't know what else to say. We need to start off by making a little garlic confit. Sound good? Let's cook. Go ahead and add about a cup full of peeled garlic that's been trimmed right into a small size sauce pot. Next, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can absolutely just use virgin olive oil or even another favorite oil that you may have. We're going over to the cooktop. We're gonna turn the heat to about medium low. It depends on how big your burner is. If it's really big, I would go low heat. If it's on the smaller side, that medium to low temperature should be absolutely perfect. This is gonna take about 45 minutes for it to perfectly cook and get that garlic nice and brown and roasted up. And of course, if you've seen that hummus recipe, you know that I'm using the exact same technique. We're roasting garlic in olive oil, cooking in its own fat, which means confit. Hence, we're making garlic confit. Now, we need to get cooking our eggplant. As you can see, I have two. They weigh about a pound and a half each. So believe it or not, I'm actually not a huge eggplant fan. It's super hard to cook, and in just seconds, it can go from good to overcooked. I'm not a big fan. I don't know what else to say. But in things like baba ganoush, where you kind of cook it, roast it, and you're pureeing it anyways, I like it. Here's what we're gonna do. Time to get right outside to that grill. So grab your eggplant. We're going on a very hot grill, about 475 degrees. When you cook it this way on the open flame, you get a lot of extra smoky deliciousness incorporated into the eggplant. I'm gonna give it a turn about every 10 minutes or so. This is gonna take about 35 to 40 minutes to completely cook. So let me just stop right here and say, if you don't have a grill, there are a few other things you can do. One, if you have a pellet smoker, oh my goodness, will this be amazing on there to get all that smoky goodness into the eggplant. You can also roast in the oven, 425 degrees for about 45 to 50 minutes. The other thing you can do, and it's something we used to do quite a bit of back in culinary school, is if you have a gas stove, just turn it on high, put that eggplant and roast it on all sides, right directly over the open flame on your cooktop you can do it now what we're going to do is go ahead and pull off the eggplant from the grill you can see that they're nice and soft you got nice little char marks on them this is absolutely excellent we're going inside to the countertop on the cutting board i'm just going to set them down let them sit for maybe five to ten minutes cool off a little bit if they are still warm put some gloves on just like i'm doing here if not you should be good to touch them if it is cool what we're gonna do is slice them right in half. And when doing this, we wanna split it and you can see all that delicious cooked eggplant right inside. Go ahead and grab a nice size spoon and all you're gonna do is scrape the inside away from the outside peeling. I'm just gonna set it to the side on a sheet tray, let it sit and cool down even more in its juices. You can put it on a plate too, totally fine. This is also a great time because our confit should be done. So heading back over to the cooktop, let's have a little look. You can see beautifully soft brown roasted garlic confit. This is gonna be absolutely delicious. Head back to your countertop. I've got a large measuring cup and a chinois, which is a fine mesh strainer. I'm just gonna separate the oil from the roasted garlic. So go ahead and pour it in. You'll have about two cups, which is what we put in in the first place. And once it's all in there, see the garlic were separated. You've got roasted garlic, plenty left over after this recipe, which is great and everything. And you've got roasted garlic olive oil, total bonus. Now in a food processor, go ahead and scrape all of the cooled down cooked eggplant right into that food processor. I'm all about the juices in there. There's so much flavor. I'll explain in a second. Now pop the lid onto the food processor. You could also mash this with a pestle and mortar or even a fork. Also, you could do it in a blender even if you wanted to. What I'm gonna do is sort of pulse it on high speed or just spin it on high speed to get it nice and soft and creamy. So let me stop and say, this is where my baba ganoush recipe is probably gonna differ from others. While a lot of folks drain that liquid off, I think that liquid is delicious and it adds so much flavor to this dip. You don't have to use all of it. I do because I think it does a good job of thinning things out so it's not super, super thick. 
but also the flavor. I can't say enough. It's amazing. If you don't want it, you want to stick maybe to a more traditional recipe, go ahead and drain it off for a few minutes, get as much liquid out as possible. But now what we want to do is add in quite a few more things. So after it's nice and smooth, what I'm going to do is just take the top off. I'm going to start adding in some of those ingredients, starting with the roasted garlic. Feel free to add a little bit more, a little bit less, depends on how much you like it. Now some tahini, which is roasted sesame seeds. I'm using roasted. You can use raw sesame seeds that are ground up. Now squeeze in the juice of one lemon. Going to add some nice citrus acid here to this recipe. Going to hit it with a bit of ground cumin. And next, a little bit of sea salt for seasoning and a hair of cayenne. If cayenne's too hot, maybe just add in a little bit of paprika, but be sure to season it with pepper as well. Now we're gonna mix all this together in our food processor while pulsing on high speed. It'll start to become nice and thick, but to give it a little bit more fat, I'm gonna add just a little bit of that roasted garlic olive oil. It's gonna provide great flavor, garlic flavor and fat also to this recipe. If it seems a little bit loose, don't worry. This will actually help emulsify it a little bit more. And once it's nice and smooth in the food processor, let's go ahead and take it off and set it to the side. Comies, my Comies, I say it all the time. You start learning and practicing these fundamental cooking techniques like properly roasting, how to make an amazing classical dip. You put all of these things, all of them into your everyday cooking, it's gonna be far better. Like I always say, it's better than the restaurants, it's better than the grocery store, it will make you a well-rounded cook. And remember, when you do things homemade, it will always taste better. And of course, we always do it from scratch here. And now we're gonna plate up in slow-mo. So I'm just gonna serve this up in a bowl. You could also do a plate. Baba ganoush typically to me is a little bit looser than a hummus. So add it right to a bowl. I like to use a good amount because gosh, we just tear through this in no time and very similar to the hummus, just a cool way to plate this up. Go ahead and add your spoon to the outside with about an inch of the baba ganoush from the outside of the bowl and just put the spoon down and then turn it. So you have this sort of spiral in our baba ganoush. And next I'm gonna drizzle on just a little bit of some garlic olive oil. Gonna add just even more awesome fat and flavor to this. Gonna garnish with a little bit of cayenne and then I'm gonna finish it with some finely chopped flat leaf parsley. This looks absolutely amazing. And man, oh man, check out this beauty. Not much more to say other than baba ganoush. Awesome to say, an amazing dip. Be sure to like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel. Check out this video. You will love it. I promise you. And I'll see you on there.